Hello, Tab Nation. It's your boy, Tom, and today we're going to be talking about, let's call them adjustable hotkeys. Let's take a look at that code. So what do I mean by adjustable hotkey? At least that's what I'm calling them. If you have a better name, let me know in the comments below. I definitely would uh, be interested to see that. Uh, but when you do your code, uh, for example here, you see I'm using F1. You know, I'm defining what the user has to do with the hotkey. They have to use F1. But let's say I want to give the user the freedom, or even yourself. Maybe you want to switch it up from time to time. Maybe you have a script where you're using this one program, and Z is a good hotkey. But in another program, you want to use the same script, but maybe T is a better option for you. You're going to have to open up your code, change it every time, save it, relaunch it. That's a pain. We don't want to do that. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to start out with F1, and we have a handler here that says start over. You'll see what that does here in a minute, but we're going to have an input box pop up. Uh, we're going to save the variable as just variable, uh, VAR, and it's going to say hotkey pick. What should it be? And for the sake of this, we're going to force the user to pick a number between 0 and 9. You don't have to do this. You could give them absolute freedom if you want it to. Or you could say, hey, you have to use one of the F keys, whatever. But I am going to at least somewhat limit them to use a number 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. We're going to submit that. The variable is going to be saved. Uh, right here, what I'm doing, I'm doing variable equals and then variable that is because I'm just trying to get rid of user error. Sometimes someone might type a one and by habit just push a space bar. We don't want that space to be included. So doing a variable to a variable, to, like reassigning it to itself, will clear out any trailing spaces or accidental beginning spaces that they put in there. So that's really just there to help prevent user error a little bit better. Uh, so next what we're going to do is we're going to make sure they are choosing what I asked them to choose. They didn't choose like a letter. So if variable contains one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, we're good to go. <clears throat> now let's say they don't do that. They, they went ahead and tried to use the letter T. We don't want them to do that. It's gonna hit this else. You're gonna get a message box. It says, must use a different hotkey. Obviously you can change the wording to whatever you want on here. Once they accept that, it's going to go to start over, which is that handler I was talking about up there. And that's just going to give them the input box again so they can try again. Hopefully they get it right this time. So let's say they did what they were supposed to do. Be surprised how often people don't do what they're supposed to do. We're then going to do this hotkey command here, which is assigning it. And it's saying variable, which is whatever they entered. You know, let's say they entered a four. Every time now they hit the four, it's going to jump to button up. And that's just going to come down here. I put a message box that says your code here. Obviously, this is what you want your hotkey to do. So if you wanted to do some type of send or copy and paste, open a window, whatever, this is where you're going to put your customized code that you've created. Now there's a few other things you can do to make it a little bit more fancy. Every time they launch this program, they're going to have to input that hotkey every single time. If you don't want to do that, you can always do an I and I write. I did a video on how to do that and I'll throw that in the comments below or sorry, the description below. So you can see that that way they don't have to. It's kind of like they do it once and then you can have an I and I write or read every time they launch the program to see if that variable exists. That way they're not having to do that input every single time. And then if they just want to change it, all they have to do is push F1 again. Uh, you can also get a little bit more fancy with this hockey thing here. As you see, I have this commented out here. It's all the exact same thing, except for you can also have it say variable up. So if I chose five, five up, that means when they press five down, your script won't run, but when they release it, 
it will run. Sometimes there is a need for an up or down trigger only versus a press. So there's a few little th th things you can get a little fancy with if you want there. So let's go ahead and see this in action, shall we? And here's the script. I called it test. I'm not very good at naming my scripts, apparently, as you'll see in most of my videos. I think it's running. All right, I'm going to press F1. What should it be? Uh, so let's go ahead and mess it up. I'm going to put R. Obviously, that is not a valid hotkey that is supposed to be used for this script. There's that message box. Must use a different hotkey. Push OK. It's going to jump back up here to this top up here. So it's going to ask me again. Oh, okay, fine. I'll use three. Why not? So push three. All right, time for me to use whatever that code is you created down there. I'm going to go ahead and push three. There it is, your code here. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or ideas on how to expand, definitely let me know them in the comments below. I'm always happy to help you guys out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely hit that button down below bell notification because I'm releasing one to two videos every single week having to do with automation, mainly auto hotkeys. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.